What's up y'all, B-Dub the Anime Master is back. Today we're going to be talking about Dragon Ball Z, Broly the Legendary Super Saiyan. Wait a minute, no we're not. This movie is old, obsolete, and is not canon. Today we're going to be talking about Dragon Ball Super, Broly. Intro, start. B-Dub the Anime Master. B-Dub the Anime Master. B-Dub the Anime Master. B-Dub the Anime Master. Dragon Ball Z the Anime One Master. Piece. Here we go the Anime Death Master. Death Note nigga. Dragon Ball Z the Anime One Master. Piece. Here we go the Anime Master. So yeah, I just got through seeing Dragon Ball Super Broly in the theaters. No, I did not see it in IMAX. I just didn't feel like paying for that. But anyway, the movie, in my opinion, was fucking awesome. I mean, who would have thought that the movie would have been good? Story wise, kind of, you know, in and out, up and down, whatever. And I'll get to that in a second. But my first impressions, this is more of a first impressions review. I'll probably have a full in depth review later on. Probably when the DVD Blu ray comes out, I'll probably go more in depth. But right now, I'm fresh off the theater, fresh on my mind, Dragon Ball Super Broly. So, first things first, I want to talk about. The retconning of the Bardock and Broly backstory, or not retconning, but retconning slash canon, canonization, if that's even a fucking word, of Broly, Bardock, and Paragus and all that good stuff. It started 41 years ago, and this, uh, the, the Frieza Force and, you know, King Cole stepped down and allowed Frieza to take over the Saiyan planet and etc. And, you know, uh, Broly had like a super powerful power level and... He was on par with Vegeta, maybe a little bit higher than Vegeta. King Vegeta was afraid of this and he disbanded Broly to a planet called Vampa. And Paragus went out to uh, go to his son and, you know, train him and etc. And of course, uh, the interesting thing, you know, for this film, because I was very curious about how, you know, Goku and Vegeta was going to fight Broly and how it all came together and how Frieza pretty much has something to do with this, you know, fight as well. And it turns out that Frieza was the one that recruited Paragus and Broly to go fight Goku and Vegeta. Like, Frieza wanted to use Saiyans to attack Goku and Vegeta. I thought that writing was fucking genius. Great genius writing there, Toriyama. Frieza using, you know, the enemies he hates so much to take out the enemies that he hates so much. It's fucking brilliant, you know? And Frieza was just comic gold in this movie, man. The dialogue, Frieza's Dragon Ball wish so he can become taller was fucking hilarious. They had the whole theater cracking the fuck up. I was dying as well. It was fucking hilarious how, because I thought he wanted immortality. I thought he wanted more power or some bullshit like that. He just wants to be fucking five centimeters taller. Unbelievably hilarious Dragon Ball wish. Uh, Bulma's Dragon Ball wish to be five years younger was funny as well. And it also kind of, you know, I feel like they threw that line out there or that scene out there to kind of make it make sense how, you know, the Dragon Ball Super timeline is kind of like in between that 10 year gap between the end of Kid Buu to the end of Z. So they're trying to make it make sense that Boma, well, I guess you could say, isn't aging too hardcore like she should. And not to mention, and not to mention, Buller's already born as well. So they're getting close to that end of Z era. I don't know how long they're going to try to dollar in that type of uh, time span, but it's looking like they're going to have to speed up into that because, because things are going to start not making sense and it has to do more retcons. But anyway, Bardock's character, in my opinion, was okay, was good, but I feel like they dumbed him down tremendously. Um, like the iconic, uh, you know, bandana, the whole look of Bardock, you know, is gone. He does still have the Freezer Rebellion where he th throws the fucking blast at Freezer's, you know, death ball, but... It just doesn't, it didn't have the same impact as the TV show. And I know this is a Broly character movie, but still I felt like Broly, I felt like Bardock was just dumbed down tremendously. Didn't really like that, but it's whatever. Goku's mother's character was okay, it's whatever. Moving on to the Broly character itself, Broly's completely different. He's more, he's kind of like Goku, where he's kind of, you know, pure hearted and kind of doesn't really know too much because he was on that 40, he was on that planet for 40 years with his father training, etc. And Paragus' character, Paragus uh, itself, he was a great character as well. Great voice performance by Damian Clark. Excellent performance. Vic Mignogna doing a different take on Broly. Still kind of sounds the same, but more of a calm, low-key, 
uh, hold back. I kind of noticed it in the screams too. Like he, he kind of holds back a bit compared to the original really like blood curling screams he used to do for the character. But don't get me wrong, the screams were good. They were okay. But it wasn't like how it was in the old Broly performance. I, I, I just noticed that, you know. But um, overall, you know, the Broly and Goku and Vegeta fights were pure fucking epic greatness. I like how it had one of the, like when Broly was fighting Goku, he had this point of view type of angle where you can see Broly's hands. It was kind of like a first person perspective and you see Goku flying around and shit. That was great. The animation quality was fucking amazing. The music was fucking amazing. The soundtrack, the chanting, it was fucking pure epic greatness, man. That high quality art is pure greatness. On that big ass screen, I was like, man, this is a Dragon Ball spectacle. But anyway, um, Super Saiyan Red Vegeta, Super Saiyan Red Vegeta, Super Saiyan God Vegeta with the red hair, epic introduction, the whole fucking audience was clapping on that scene. Um, the Super Saiyan uh, Blue Gogeta Broly fight was fucking epic as hell. Their fucking battle power was so strong that it broke space and time, bro, and it was fighting in that strange area. Pure epic greatness, you know. Great dub performances by Christopher Ayers as Frieza. Unbelievable performance. I'm glad he was able to do the movie. It was great. Sean Schimmler's Goku, amazing. Chris Sabat as Vegeta, amazing. Everybody did a great job in, as far as the dub. And the movie was very entertaining. The only cons was that they dumbed down Bardock. And um, I really, another thing I want to talk about is that Broly, for a while, like after he kind of like went ape shit and fought Goku and Vegeta and Frieza. Um, he didn't have any more like he didn't have any more talking scenes. I felt like that was kind of kind of like kind of stupid. Like I felt like he should have had more scenes of dialogue with his father and more scenes of dialogue after everything was over with. But he just went into the like Rrr! like it was kind of like eh, it's it's expected, but whatever. I also really loved how Frieza was getting his ass beat by Broly. That was pure comedy too, epic as fuck. But anyway, that's my first impressions. Go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Dragon Ball Super Broly. It was pretty good. I give it an 8 out of 10. Check out my Facebook fan page. Leave a like for the Facebook fan page. And leave a like for this video as well. Follow me on Twitter. Links are in the description. I'm B-Dub, the Anime Master. Peace. Dragon Ball Z, the Anime Master. Here we go.